everybody, uh, and thank you so much for coming to today's seminar. Um, so we are going to be talking about individual path recommendation under public transit service disruptions, considering behavior, uncertainty, and equity. Um, and our speaker today is Beishwan Lo. Um, so Beishwan is a PhD student in the transportation program at MIT. He completed his dual master's degree in transportation and computer science at MIT in 2020. Prior to joining MIT, he got a BE degree from the Department of Civil Engineering at Tsinghua University, awarded Tsinghua Presidential Scholarship. His main research interests are data-driven transportation modeling, demand modeling, and machine learning. And his master's thesis was on the network performance model for urban rail system monitoring. His current research focuses on unplanned incident analysis and management in urban rail systems sponsored by the Chicago Transit Authority for the CTA. Um, so with no further ado, I will hand it over to Rachel. Well, thanks so much, Bonnie, for the introduction and uh, thanks to Professor Cho for the invitation. And uh, it's my great honor to be, sure, to be able to share my research at uh, New York University. And uh, today I'm going to, talk, going to talk about one of my latest research of uh, individual pass recommendation on the public uh, service disruptions. Uh, so I believe uh, many of you guys, if you are a regular MTA user, you may also you may already encounter such scenario of public transit service disruptions. Usually during a disruption, you have to wait for a long time, or you even have to change your routes. And uh, this actually causes a great inconvenience uh, for both uh, operators and, and customers. So uh, what's the motivation of considering password recommendation during this service disruptions? So there are basically two different reasons. The first one is, during the service disruptions, uh, they are still have the system still have alternative services, which we call redundancy in the system uh, to transport passengers, which means uh, when the one line goes down, you can still should uh, use a nearby uh, real lines or bus routes. Uh, another reason is that we found that pa passengers, although with this uh, redundancy in the system, they cannot make wise choices or well utilize the capacity of the system if you don't provide them with enough guidance. And here we show a simple example in Chicago Trent system, which is a full license uh, happened between uh, Harlem and Jackson Park station, uh, caused a service suspended of the whole blue line. And uh, uh, during this disruption, there's all of the blue line shut down, where you already have other options. You can uh, wait there, wait, wait there for blue line to recover or use parallel bus line or use west to east bus line to transfer to the ground line. Or use a source, uh, north source bus line to transfer to blue line. Although there are different options, uh, from our smart smart car data analysis, we didn't uh, find that passenger can well utilize all this uh, capacity system. We do, we found that this parallel bus line is bus fifty six. It is uh, heavily used, with, which become very congesting and crowding. Uh, and we also observe some passengers use west east bus route to transfer to to, to the blue line, but only a few passengers uh, identify that there's a also vertical way of transfer to green line. So this kind of otherwise choices uh, in, kind of motivate us to consider what if we can provide other condition to passengers so that they can better utilize the capacity over the system. And talking about this password condition, there are usually two different schemes, uh, which we call station based and individual based. Uh, at this in a station based uh, scheme. Uh, the bus rec the, the recommendation system is defined uh, at the station level. So basically, at each station, we recommend a pass or several pass to all passengers uh, start at this station. And this recommendation can be shown as the electrical board at the station, and the recommendation can change over time. Uh, and this is a kind of mock screen of station based recommendation strategy. Uh, so you can say that we, we can show different alternative paths uh, when there's a, a service disruption. And uh, another way is the individual base. So uh, it, in this game, for each individual, we recommend a pass or several pass to uh, based on this individual's input. This individual, they may input their origin, destination, and other time. After getting this information, we can recommend a customized pass to this customer. So uh, and this is a mock screen for individual based game. There's some pros and cons for both of uh, this, this, this schemes. Uh, basically, the station based system. It is very easy to implement because you can implement at the station level with, with the current facility of the uh, electrical board, for example. But it cannot capture individual heterogeneity 
because different individuals they may have different preference of using different routes. Like uh, someone they may prefer to use bus, uh, someone prefer to use this train. If you recommend with some routes they don't really like, they may not follow your recommendation, and the passengers at very low acceptance rates for your recommendation. Your recommend is is can become meaningless for you to design the system. Uh, and uh, but for individual based system, we can capture uh, customized information to provide. Uh, individualized recommendation to passengers. This can lead to potentially a better performance, but it will be very hard to implement because you need at individual level information. It's very hard to collect this kind of information. Uh, in my research, I, I actually developed both of the scheme, but today I will present the individual based passenger recommendation. And here is how we design our system. So uh, this program can be described in this way, like for a specific passenger P. Uh, we want to decide which paths are we should recommend to them uh, so that the, the design variable will be a binary, binary, binary design variable XGR. Uh, and the objective is to minimize the system trial time and respect passengers' inference uh, choice per the uh, choice preference. But there, as I mentioned before, there are some challenges in the system uh, when we want to design this recommendation model. The first one is behavior uncertainty. So what if Passenger, they may not follow your recommendation. That means uh, if you, you are not uncertain, you are not certain about passenger's behavior. That means you are not certain about the, the broad distribution of the system. Then the system evaluation becomes uncertain. Things. This is the first challenge. Another one is equity issues. So you can imagine that the motivation of passenger recommendation is to distribute passengers to uh, using different routes in the system. Then there will definitely be some longer route and some, some short routes. So if passengers at the same origin, destination, and departure time, they are recommended with the pass. One is significantly long and another is significantly short. There will be some fairness issues that passengers using this longer routes will feel like betrayed unfair. Uh, so we want to, in our model, to try our best to avoid this issues. Uh, and here is a simple example to show how we solve this passenger competition problem. Uh, the, so consider this simple example, we have three stations and uh, there's a disruption between station A and B. And uh, at station A, there are two passengers. They have to choose alternative route, either, either use bus routes or use route at two. Uh, and uh, what, we, what, what do we mean about the system trial time? So the system trial time basically means we don't only want to minimize the trial time of these two passengers, which will be, uh, well, we still, we, we still recommend at station A. We also want to minimize uh, the trial time of uh, this uh, two orange passengers in other routes because these two routes will, will, will get more passengers coming from Eastern line and they can become crowded. This time may also be a factor. So the system trial time actually means we want to minimize the, the, the trial time of all passengers in the system, even if some passengers are not in the Eastern line. And uh, what we mean about behavior uncertainty, for example, we recommend the passenger to use a uh, bus route, but he or she may not accept the recommendation and choose to use route at two instead. This may happen in the system. And the equity issues basically means for these two passengers, if they, they, are, they share the same origin and destination and departure time, and if one of them are recommended with these bus routes in the outside and another of them are recommended, like recommended with the route line two, we, we want to make sure that the trial time of these two routes are similar. Otherwise, there will be uh, equity issues. Like this is the kind of a overall framework of the model. Uh, we assume we have the predict demand information and uh, also the uh, full information of the supplier. Basically, we assume we, we know how, this, how the agency is going to respond to the incident and adjust in the, their operations. Uh, and our model uh, trying to, is trying to minimize the system trial time to respect the preference, considering the area uncertainty and, the, and trial time equity. And the output of the system will be a strategy X. And uh, uh, here's uh, also another challenge when solving this problem, because what we know is only the only demand. Uh, when you want to evaluate the network performance, we need to know the pass flow over the system. So this pass flow kill over, over the network is unknown. They have to be estimated from some uh, simulation or network loading model. Uh, on, the, on the other, uh, other hand, the pass recommendation strategy X is also unknown. And the way it may affect the flow distribution. Because when you recommend have with specific paths, if this will change their path choice preference and their actual path choice may also change. So this X will affect this Q. Uh, and uh, our model will solve this two uh, the same variables simultaneously. 
And you will see that there's a even more significant problem that the past for Q will become a random variable when you cast the behavior uncertainty. This causes even uh, kind of more challenging problem uh, in the optimization model. So we first talk about how we gonna solve a uh, uh, pass flow in the system. So this is the uh, we found a, we found that there's a linear program model that can solve the optimal flow distribution in a public transit system. Uh, the idea uh, the the design variable will be this Q, which we call pass flow, uh, which means the uh, number of passengers with only pair U V and departure time T during pass R. This is the objective from uh, this is the design variable, and uh, we want to minimize the total system time time. And this is there's a paper uh, by Professor Dimitris Basimus uh, at MIT, and they propose this uh, linear programming based optimal flow uh, model. And this model can output the optimal uh, optimal pass flow over the system. And the uh, the the we we adjust we adapt this model to a disrupting scenario by reviving some of the variable in the system. But the idea the key idea is simple, is similar. Uh, this model can output the optimal flow distribution. And it's a linear program. That's, that's all we need to know. Uh, and now, now we know how we solve this optimal flow over the system. But the problem is we haven't considered that individual. We haven't combined this uh, individual possible combination. Right? So here we start to model the behavior uncertainty uh, using this uh, typical discrete choice model or typical uh, behavior, behavior behavior modeling framework. We assume the passengers preference, uh, passenger piece preference to our uh, utility to, to a pass R uh, can be formulated, formulated as this linear uh, formulation where this VRP is an incurrent preference to pass R. So this incurrent preference capture is uh, the heterogeneity over the system. And uh, uh, we will also have this uh, impact term. This means the utility impact if we recommend the pass R prime on pass R. So you recommend the uh, as the P with pass R prime, what's the impact on the of the utility on pass R? Uh, so if you uh, assume this is a utility maximize, you assume assume some utility maximization, and you are getting the probability the probability of passenger P during pass R, even uh, that pass R prime is recommended, will be this one. Uh, but if you assume this, uh, further assume this is a double distribution, you got a logic model. So this pi. Uh, pi RP R prime well is a conditional probability that is very important because it describes passengers' uh, probability of choosing a pass given another pass is recommended. And uh, this pi for each individual P can be uh, written as this matrix form. And here's a simple example. Uh, so we, we also this the example basically shows that if you recommend a pass to a passenger, then this passenger will have higher probability of using this pass. But they, they, they still have probability of using other pass as well. For example, uh, if you look at column two, the system recommends this, this passenger to use pass two, then the probability for this passenger to use pass two will be uh, 0.8, but he will not guarantee to use pass two. There's still two, uh, like point one of probability of using pass one and another point one probability of using pass three. Uh, in, in this study, we we'll assume we know this matrix. Basically, we we'll assume for every individual, we know their conditional probability of uh, using a specific pass, giving other paths are, are recommended. Uh, this matrix can be estimated from survey or inferred from historical uh, travel trajectories. You don't need to uh, get the exact value in the real world uh, application. You, you just need to capture, okay, there are some difference of over passengers and there they have some difference in, in using different paths. That's, that's that's all we need. So basically as soon as matrix is known and it uh, in my opinion it, it does not need to be very accurate. So uh, given this behavior uncertainty basically means uh, the passengers given even if we recommend him to use different paths they, they still have probability of using other paths. This is behavior uncertainty. Uh, given this behavior uncertainty we all find out that the pass fraud in the system will become a, a random variable. This is actually a big issue. So we can we can start with the individual's behavior. Let's say the indicator random variable one uh, R P R prime indicating whether passenger P actually choose pass R or not, even P or she is recommended with pass R prime. This is actually a Bernoulli random variable and the ways the expectation equal to the the pi we we just defined. Uh, 
And the actual flaw, uh, this big Q, will be a random variable which equal to the summation of individual choices. Right? This is a very straightforward. You just sum all of individual choices and to get an actual flaw Q. Uh, and uh, because it's a summation of, of uh, the new random variable, this, this big Q, this actual flaw will also be a random variable. And we have the mean and the variance uh, by just simply implement the uh, expectation and the uh, and variance formulation. Uh, the problem is that uh, because we want to, because the, the uh, recall that our objective function is to minimize the system time, right? System time is a function of the actual pass flow in the system. So now the actual pass flow is a random variable, and uh, it's also a distinct variable in the system, as we mentioned in the optimal flow problem. So the the the, the challenge is that in in our optimization problem, we cannot use a random variable as a distinct variable because any any optimization problem you will solve exactly. Variable, like exactly the same variable and exact value, we don't solve this distribution, right? So the, this this uh, if if now the random variable become uh, the distinct variable become a random variable, it, it causes problem in solving annual solution problem because you, you don't necessarily know what you solve is uh, uh, how how the solve the solution is related to the distribution. So our assumption is that we propose a a, a, a very uh, novel solution for this one. The idea is that Let's now change the distinct variable Q, a small Q in the optimal program, in the optimal flow problem as a realization of the actual flow. So now, because the realization is a deterministic variable, uh, so we now kind of drop this uh, random variable ahead and only consider this uh, Q as a realization. But because Q is a realization of this random variable, big Q, we have to make sure this small Q satisfies some of the constraints, because otherwise, you, you, you want to draw a random variable, draw a value from a distribution, this value have to be related to this distribution, right? And uh, uh, here's what we assume uh, this Q uh, will be satisfied. The first line is this, uh, this realization for Q is small Q is close to the expectation of the random variable. So which means you draw a, a, you draw a value from the distribution, this value should be very close to the mean. And uh, another idea is that uh, this random variable should be concentrated to the value we draw. That basically means, uh, if, if you can assume in this way, if, if it's a uniform distribution, uh, any value has an equal probability. If close to the mean, it's meaningless because this value can be any value in the uniform distribution. It has equal probability, right? So we have to, we want to make sure this distribution is, is centralized so that uh, close to the mean is a meaningful uh, representation. So this actually, uh, uh, can be represented by a wireless control as well from the river. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, so here's how we model the first constant. Uh, first constant is close to the mean, which we call it as a uh, so question. Right? Let me go back to the first yeah. slide. Uh, so you're saying you can use like random variables, but I mean, don't you have like stochastic programming? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, probability distributions. And yeah, exactly. So basically, all the stochastic programming or robust optimization assume the constraints for the parameter are random variable, not the same one. That's kind of a different uh, concept. Uh, but uh, yes, you can like change the object function. You can like say, I don't minimize the object function, I mean, as an expectation of the object function. But recall that the same variable also appears in the, in, the, uh, in the constraints. That basically means you have to. Formulate like a constant as not as a uh, as a, a simple e e inequality you have as a probability of inequality. Right? You can that's another way to model, but it's kind of much more complicated because because if it's a uh, if it's a uh, if, if the uncertainty is in the parameters or in the uh, in the parameter of the constant, not in the decimal variable, that that's not really the simple. Because you can always get a, a, get a probability guarantee by using integral or something. But if in the uh, same variable, that's that's a different concept. That's a major difference. Yeah, that's for the clarification. So uh, okay, so uh, now we assume that we don't consider uh, random distinct variable. We consider this distinct variable as a realization of a random variable. Then it has to be first close to the mean. Uh, we assume that this the simple constant that this realization field should be close to the expectation of the actual flaw. And when the internal equal to zero, we actually are uh, minimizing the this system problem. And this is a, not a trivial concrete. You have to uh, 
uh, prove that because of this uh, linear linear population model, you can represent the solution as a linear combination of all extreme rates and extreme points. That's how you get this conclusion. But basically, epsilon equal to zero, you get you are minimizing the system trauma. But as I mentioned before, if it's a uniform distribution, even if you are minimizing the mean uh, of the system trauma, it's, it's minimus because the, the, the actual trauma time can be any value along this, this uniform distribution. Right. So you have to add another virus country you want to make this distribution concentrated on, on the uh, realization fuel. And this actually can be represented by, by this probability formula, uh, meaning that the probability that the, the, the random variable and the realization are, are very different, this probability is bounded about uh, by, by some parameter gamma, and which we call, this is why we call it uh, gamma concentration. And this probability representation can be proved to be uh, to, to become a linear constraint using Chef's inequality. So uh, both of these constraints, uh, we get lucky to transform them into linear constraints. This is how we uh, model this behavior uncertainty and uh, consider it as, as two constraints in the system. Uh, so after, so besides the, the as, as I mentioned before, after the behavior uncertainty, we also want the objective function is also, one of the objective function is to respect passive preference. Uh, and this preference can be represented as this uh, x times, and so uh, as the summation of all the incurrent preference to pass r. So, uh, and this is equivalent to minimize the negative value. So we can add this component to the objective function so that we get a trade off between minimizing system trial time and the respective passive preference. And here is the final uh, formulation of the individual passive computation model. And we have two missing variables, y is x. That's, uh, uh, one is X with a recommendation strategy, another is uh, optimal flow of Q. Uh, these two are solved simultaneously, so that this is an efficient way to, to solve it. And uh, the objective is to uh, the first uh, two term is a um, waiting time plus variable time is a system trial time, and uh, uh, the, the, the third term is the uh, passenger's preference, which is weighted by a parameter uh, side. And we also have this epsilon availability and gamma concentration constraints. Plus other constant I, I omit, omitted here. Uh, we, but this is a large scale mixed integer programming, and we found that uh, when this composition becomes an ideal tool to solve this problem, because the master problem uh, can be reduced, uh, the, the master problem reduces to an optimal flow problem, which is a linear programming with only one more constant compared to before. And uh, the sub problem uh, becomes a smaller scale uh, mixed integer programming, which can also be solved efficiently. So this this kind of structure makes fitness composition an ideal tool to solve this life scale problem. And uh, we already talked about behavior uncertainty, but I, what I said before, as what I said before, there's also another challenge is uh, equity issues. So the mathematical definition of equity is like this. Uh, the, the conceptual definition is that for patients with the same only pair and departure time t, they shouldn't have too much difference in trial time if they are. Uh, it's very follow the, the, the recommendation. So the mathematical uh, formulation will be uh, the trial time of this passenger P minus the minimal trial time of all passengers in the same situation should be, uh, this is the difference of this passenger trial time uh, to the minimal possible trial time of other passengers in the same, in the same situation should be smaller than a predetermined threshold. Uh, but this, this, this constant cannot be directly added into uh, into the optimization model because travel time of passenger P uh, in past R is TDPR is not uh, has no analytical formulation to describe. So you cannot describe this TTPR as a function of past flow. That this causes a challenge in adding this constant directly to the problem, uh, to the optimization problem. So we uh, propose an idea uh, of post-processing to solve these equity issues. The idea is very simple. Uh, so basically, let's say we ignore this equity constant first and solve the problem once. And then, given this solved pass flow, we can calculate the trial time. Uh, after, we, after we get the trial time, we can, cal we can calculate the, we can identify whether there are some passengers have significantly longer trial time than others. If yes, then we, we recommend uh, these passengers use another pass with, with smaller trial time. So then we repeat this step until the system coverage. Uh, this is a little bit like, uh, user equilibrium assignment, but uh, 
there's a sub, the, the difference that we only consider a small proportion of passing at least not, not uh, we, we don't require them to have equal trial time, we just require them to have similar trial time. Uh, but although the idea is simple, the implementation is still challenging because you cannot really adjust the password in the system. But as I mentioned before, this password will have to always satisfy epsilon uh, feasibility and gamma concentration constraints. So solving this problem, uh, this equity process processing actually becomes solving a series of this uh, mixed integer optimization problem because we want to always enforce the uh, epsilon feasibility and gamma concentration constraints. And uh, I will ignore the details here, but the idea is that uh, at every step we solve this problem, this can, it can ensure that the epsilon feasibility and gamma concentration are satisfied. And our objective is to minimize the degree of unfairness by only adjusting the recommendation for some very unfair, has unfair, unfairly traded the passenger ticket. So in this problem, we only have a small number of missing variables, which are passengers who we already identified with significantly longer travel time than others. So the problem still become much more smaller because a lot of recommendation strategy acts for other passengers are already fixed because they are already they already satisfy the fairness constraints. Okay, and uh, this is the overall uh, post processing process. I think now I already finished the uh, methodology part. Uh, here's a where is, uh, so people may uh, may be curious about what, because now I illustrate the model by uh, that assuming a system can only recommend one specific path to a customer. Actually, this model can be easily extended to a situation where we can recommend multiple paths to one customer. We just uh, we just treat that uh, multiple paths as a composition. So there's a composition one, recommend pass one and pass two, and uh, composition two, recommend pass one and pass three. Uh, you have different compositions, and also you get this uh, conditional matrix by uh, a conditional given, uh, given this passenger are, are recommended with different composition. And this is still, uh, and the, the model frame of that does not change. Only the scale of the problem increase a little bit because you have more. Uh, different recommendation strategies to a specific task. But if you get this matrix, you can still increment our, our framework. So this is how this model can be extended to a scenario that you can recommend multiple paths to a task. Uh, with the case study will be the same as the uh, as example I gave before. Uh, in this Chicago Bura instance, and uh, there's different four options in a system. And uh, here is the model convergence results we proved at our benefits combination. Uh, can be more efficient than uh, many auto shift solvers uh, in solving uh, this problem. And uh, here is uh, the key comparison, comparison of average trial time. So here, are, here we calculate two different average trial time. One is for all passengers in the system, another is for only for incident like passengers. So basically, that passengers are uh, who re receive the, the, the recommendation. And uh, here, here are also two benchmark models. The, the status score basically means the uh, the passengers' actual choices inferred from AFC data. So we use AFC data to infer passengers' uh, choices uh, when the incident happened in that specific day. So this we call the status score. And the comparison based is a very intuitive, intuitive way, like you recommend the passenger to a pass. Proportional, the probability of recommending the passenger to a pass is proportional to the available capacity of the pass. So that's how this capacity based benchmark is implemented. And we found that as, in, as in expected, our uh, pass recommendation model can outperform both of these scenarios. Uh, and we can even uh, reduce the average trial time of these passengers by around 20%. And here's also a comparison of. Uh, whether we should consider behavior uncertainty or not, if the system did have this uh, uncertainty. So uh, the idea is that the, the model without uncertainty means that when, when we're solving this model, we assume this posterior uh, control probability equal to one. If you run, uh, uh, so if you run the pass, then the passenger will 100% uh, accept the pass. This is how you, this only implement at the model solving stage. But when you evaluate the model, the uncertainty is still included. The patch may still not follow your recommendation. So this basically means uh, we, are, we are evaluating what if we ignore this uncertainty when solving the model, but the uncertainty does exist in the system. And uh, as, as expected, we uh, consider this behavior uncertainty uh, can achieve smaller trial time, although this 
this decrease is slightly small, uh, but it's, it's still better than uh, if there's a concern you system, if you consider it, it's still better than all concern units. And here are the results of post processing. And uh, this is the uh, this, this left hand side graph basically shows the uh, difference of the passenger trial time to the minimal uh, to the minimal trial time of other passengers in uh, in the same situation. So we set the threshold as 10 minutes. So after the post processing, you can see that all passengers, there's no passengers uh, with uh, trial time longer than 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes longer than, than the smallest uh, possible trial time in, in the same situation. So, but before the uh, post processing, we did observe some passengers, they have their, their they, they may have, they, they may experience 25 minutes longer trial time than others, uh, even if they are in the same situation. But the trade off will be uh, this uh, all passengers' total trial time will slightly increase because you are here, you are sacrificing some of the efficiency in the system to address this acquisition. But the increase is more. We observe that there's only 0.5% uh, of increase in, in total trial time. Uh, and then here are the results of considering passenger preference. And in this graph, we basically show uh, this different value of Psi. Psi is a weight on the component of respecting passenger preference. If you have higher value of Psi, it basically means your system emphasizes more on respecting passenger preference, and there, there will be more passengers to be recommended with the pass uh, that has a, he, he has the highest uh, incurrent utility on that. Uh, so the, the results are like this. So when like when the value is like 10 to the power of three, uh, we have like more than 70% of passengers being recommended with their paper pass. But if you look at this trial time increase, there's only 0.5% of increase in total trial time. This basically means we only sacrifice this 0.5% uh, of the system's efficiency. We can make sure more than 70% of passengers being recommended, recommended with their paper pass. Uh, yeah, this is a kind of summarize of the uh, summary of all the conclusions. Uh, I think it's very straightforward. You may just read the, it's just a, simple, a summary of my first uh, papers, and uh, that's all my presentation today. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, thanks. So, <clears throat> You say that if you reduce the travel time at the whole in the whole system, right? Yes. But the thing is, uh, as the individual, I don't care about the work system. I just care about myself. Mm -hmm. I want to be very fast. So, what would be the incentive for me as a customer to, to use this uh, this uh, app or this uh, information? Like, how I, I know that using the new path, because if I go to work every day, I have a path A, B, and I want to do the same. So why I would change? Why would give me incentive to change this behavior? Yeah, this is a very good question. Thanks for asking. So the uh, basic motivation is that you did have your familiar path every day, but during during the disruption, that path is blocked. You have to find a new path, and you have no knowledge because you are too familiar with paths. You have knowledge, no knowledge about other paths, or very little knowledge about other paths. At this situation, it's highly likely that you may need some guidance from the system. And, and I think another question is whether our recommendation should be trust, trusted or not. Uh, this is a very good question. So if we only care about reducing the system trial time, you may experience longer trial time than your previous choices. It is possible. Uh, but because there's uh, no counterfactual for you, you there's no same incident that happened uh, twice in your, in your life that you know that following my current recommendation of longer than your last experience, you don't have that counterfactual. That's why, that's why we don't define the equity as, uh, as, that, as, uh, mm, as, that, as that you have to be faster than your previous source. Because you don't have, we passengers don't know uh, what, what will happen if they don't follow the recommendation. That's why we define the equity as your comparison of other passengers. That's your, what you can uh, preserve from, you, you can, that, well, that's, that's the only information you can compare with. So, the, so uh, that's why I have equity that if you feel like, okay, all passengers, if, they become, uh, if you follow my recommendation, I can ensure that you will not be, uh, uh, you will not be smaller than 10 minutes than other passengers around you in the same situation. That's kind of our guarantee of the, to increase the trust of the system. Uh, 
I, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like I don't want to like, I I travel with some people, I don't want to be uh, slow. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, so that time where I think so it's the system is mostly for one little description in the for the subway, the like a subway is blocked on uh, in the middle of two stations. Yeah. It's hard to reverse, how to do all the parts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a possible information about how uh, when your previous uh, primary pass is blocked, how, how do we provide uh, new information to customers to use uh, uh, their unfamiliar routes? But it could be a demand as well, like um, avoid for less. So if I want, if I have a long trip and I want to sit in the subway and it's a three different route to go to my destination, maybe the system could know the, the coroness of the uh, subway or the bus and yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a that's a very good uh, idea. And uh, so basically, when you if you want to uh, add like other preference uh, uh, variables that like the state availability and the congestion level and so on, you can all add it into this formulation so that this posterior probability can be changed. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah, uh, I have a question about your function. Okay. Uh, uh, you assume that individual behavior is dependent. Uh, yes. But but I mean, if I if I travel with my friends, our trust may may not be dependent. Uh, uh, so I mean, so yeah, yeah. Dependent. So that's that's a that's a tricky question. So uh, actually, there's no uh, independent assumption of behave, behavior. We only assume, but uh, we actually we actually make a stronger assumption. I will so explain why. We assume that given a recommendation, this patient's uh, conditional probability is known. This known probability can be attributed to the dependency uh, of other patient behaviors as, as well. So, but whatever uh, this x is given, we assume we know this probability. It can be due to independent assumption or can be due to uh, dependency assumption. But, but whatever we assume this probability is known, it's a kind of a stronger assumption than what we just mentioned before. So yeah, I, I, we, we don't explicitly, uh, explicitly make that assumption, but this actually is a stronger assumption. If you want to actually estimate this matrix, that will be one factor that should be taken into account. You should consider like your uh, group level decision as well to estimate this, this matrix. Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, just following up on both those comments. Uh, mm -hmm. What happens if you have a group of people traveling together, uh, same origin, same destination, same departure time, and then your system recommends different paths for them? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that may kind of lose trust in the system in that case. Uh, so I guess I didn't uh, make that extension at this model because uh, in this model, the idea that uh, we want to distribute passenger. Uh, to different paths so that they can well utilize the system. But if some passengers they really want uh, like will go there as a group, they may uh, input their information and there's additional information called uh, like number of uh, the number of passengers in this group. So you don't so you you, you improve origin doesn't have departure time and the flaws so that uh, this uh, this XPR this P will represent a group of passengers and the group number can be one. I guess that can have the extension of the model, but it, I haven't, uh, but this will cause some problem in this, this for expectation and calculation. Uh, I haven't really uh, dig into that details, but I, I think that's a way of extending the model. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, just related to that, uh, I mean, this, this is giving individual recommendations, uh, but do you use any individual uh, attributes in? Uh, yeah. Uh, this uh, so we we must, this is kind of a simplification of individual behavior modeling. We basically assume no, we assume this is known. So all the individual attributes should be captured before you uh, should be cap captured before estimating this matrix. Yeah. That means individual attributes can be captured by this inherent preference to a specific path. Uh, because all the attributes they only affect their their choice probability. That's all the thing I think. So, so ideally, uh, you would use, you're assuming like if uh, you would track the individual user's history and- uh, Yeah, so this, the, actually in the, in the, in the uh, experiment design, we did do that. We, uh, we, we assign this value based on uh, fast, fast user and the real user to kind of 
and adjust their preference a little bit, but that's a very simple way of defining speed. It can be a, yeah, that definitely can be more complicated. Than um, I also had a question about the way you, uh, you use the term equity. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it sounds really like what you're doing is you're trying to find a solution between like a system of more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and perhaps even you're doing like a bounded irrational user equilibrium or something like that. Um, I mean, when you're saying that this solution is an equitable solution, you're implying that like a user equilibrium is equitable. Is yeah, it? Okay. yeah, yeah. That's a. Uh, uh, I, I have to admit that there are definitely a lot of de de different definitions of equities. Yeah. And uh, from my definition, I, uh, I agree that uh, user equilibrium is the most equitable uh, uh, assignment in my definition of equities. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I know that, that uh, it, it feels like there's a mix of like uh, the use of the term equity versus equality. Uh, and I, I know there are examples out there that uh, showcase like oh, differences yeah. between them. Uh, so, so if, if equality is, is a more suitable, uh, is, is equality a more suitable person? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, basically you're you're trying to achieve uh, uh, like a, more of like a user equilibrium. Yeah. Uh, which is, I think it's more of a uh, equality. Okay, yeah, if that's the case, I will, I will I'm, I'm happy to change it. But I mean, yeah, we can look into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, because it, it really has a very strong social uh, idea in mind. So the equity information is like a social uh, economy. So we can have this kind of idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar with this equity and equality definitions concept, but I will look into it. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And we have uh, this is the rigid constraint. And in the time, and cases where the solution that might exist. Uh, some some users have seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. This is a very good question. Uh, that this 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 can happen in a system that we can. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe no. I, I think this this constant this constant this, the solution will always exist. But maybe the worst case can be that uh, you can assume that all passengers only use one pass. I will come. All passengers use one pass. Then their travel time are all the same. That's the most uh, that's equitable, but not not very efficient. Uh, but but the uh, it's uh, we are doing the recommendation. You don't consider the traffic constraint. Uh, I I did, but uh, I mean you recommend the you in the in the travel system the a path uh, you can think it as an infinite capacity because you can always get a, a, a lot of change and you can get left behind. That's okay. I, I mean we are we are thinking about your travel time uh, as a, so we basically assume, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you, the, the, the panel with the same path, they may also have a final, finalized a different travel time because they are being left behind different paths. So that's, that's true, right? But that's not what you consider here. Uh, it, it, so basically, as long as you do the same path, we assume the, uh, the travel time of this path is the same. You have a high uh, kind of difficult to calculate. Yes, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's and true. That's, uh, and you need to have enumeration, right? And you need not to be uh, Sorry, what's your last one? That's per user, right? And that's, yeah, that's a metric for every user. Uh, yeah. So I agree it's very hard to calculate. Uh, but in, because in the model, this is not the box of the study. We assume we know this metrics. We are doing a, 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 a event introducing the methodology mentioned uh, in 1990, stochastic staging. I don't quite get it. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. what I understand is stochastic staging is something like I, I, call, I call it a coin to decide who A or B or something mm -hmm. in, in this way. So, yeah, we can, I can decide a little bit more. So the, so the problem is that. Like when you solve an optimization problem, there are different components. There's a parameters, which like uh, ax equal to b. There's a con if a is smaller than b, this is, if this is a constant that a with a and b we call it uh, parameters, and the x is a distinct variable. Right? So usually, all uh, like stochastic optimization or other robust optimization, they consider uncertainties in a and b. This means your parameter may be uncertain, and uh, in, in that case. You can you either use stochastic optimization or robust optimization to divide uh, to to uh, to solve this problem. But what if your x is a random variable? Because you can because 
in 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 all this forecasting and uh, and uh, of uh, the robust implementation, they all output only one single value of x. So that's the problem that you cannot assume x is a random variable because you output a single value of x. What's the meaning of the x? Uh, what's the meaning of this output value? Because you know it's a random variable, but if the optimization model only output one value, you kind of get confused of why what what's the what is the relationship between this output value and the, and the actual distribution. So that's why we think uh, optimization model shouldn't have a Design variable uh, should have should have a random design variable. The design variable should always be assumed as a deterministic variable. The deterministic variable can be the mean of the random variable or can be uh, some other things of the variable, but it can have to be deterministic. Uh, so what, what we assume here is uh, our design variable is a real, realization of the of the random variable, and this realization is very close to the mean and the and it's, it, it is central, centralized by, by the whole distribution. That's a, uh, uh, hopefully this is clear. Uh, yeah, how come it's not uh, also, I think, that expected? So uh, for user, so what your recommendation for user, uh, given user in the system, your, your result is uh, in the path that you recommend to user. Why is that the same variable in the first place? Uh, so, because, because the pattern may not follow this recommendation. It has the probability of moving Different paths. So your decision is which path is recommended. No, again, the decision is which path we recommend, but the uh, objective is mean by the system trial time. System trial time is a function of actual flaw. Actual flaw in fact is actual decision. Actual decision can be different from what I recommend. So uh, that's, that, that is not stochastic to your decision. Your decision is deterministic. Yeah, decision is uh, no, no, decision is not decision is a random because the uh, actual decision. If uh if is this back for distribution given different recommendation. So your your decision, your final decision plus one, two, three is a probability distribution. It's not a decision it, it deterministic thing. No, that's but that's in the objective, right? I mean the point is that the system is giving deterministic decisions, uh, but the objective value is is uh, is the outcome of a random yeah, yeah, yeah. Example, yeah. I, I'm, but, I'm, a, I'm a user in the system. I have three paths, path one, path two, path three. And you you mean that you give a deterministic path, say as one to me, or you uh, I, I give you a recommendation path. of pass one, but I don't know you what whether you are choose pass one or not. Right, but then you can still do yeah. that as a stochastic. Um, yeah, yeah, you can you can take the expectation yeah. of the objective function. Yeah. But how do you model uh, other constants uh, with respect to Q here? You do you do you do you assume that you take expectation of Q equal to the demand, or do you model it as a probability uh, equal to the uh, this that basically means if you assume it's a yeah. you 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 can take expectation as the as the as the object function that's okay right. uh, you have to also take either take expectation or use some probability guarantee for all your constants right but it's, yeah so it seems like some constraints are based but, on the realization. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So can you turn that into like a two-stage stochastic problem or something where you have uh, a realization in the second stage? I I, I don't really uh, understand this two two stage stochastic operation. Yeah, right. I mean you can you can uh, split it so that it's uh, you basically have first stage where you have uh, decision variables prior to knowing uh, what's the realization, and then given the realization that uh, you have uh, the uh, you can have further. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I think yeah. That's I think that's very similar to yeah. uh, to my to my kind of formulation. But I just make it in the same stage, yeah. but add constant to all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think that that would address the constraint that. Yeah. Um, I think um, the way you you say is a confusing because. Oh yeah, you sure. You can play it with a lot of distribution. Um, for example, there's a user in the system. Um, this user has two paths, mm -hmm. and you can. Have, um, because for the con is that which path you recommend is the one type of stochastic decision, right? But even for this, for this even for this case, we can just decide, uh, you can decide the, the probability of that con bias con with all the scale of the community decision. I'm confused with the letter, letter case where it's just in the letter case. Uh, yeah, let me let me clarify this a little bit. So, as a, as a System design operator, you you want to minimize the system trial time, right? The system trial time is a function of the 
passenger's actual choice. So when you make the decision, you don't know the passenger's actual choice. You know this actual choice is a, is a, is a, is a random variable. It can be pass one or pass two or pass three. You don't know which pass they will actually use. Your decision has to be made before you know that you, the, the decision has to be made with the information of only this distribution instead of uh, knowing which exact pass they use. That, is that uh, slightly clear to me? <laughs> to, to you? Okay, thanks. Yeah, but the, I'm glad to talk with after the meeting. If you have more questions. Other questions or comments? Anyone on Zoom that uh, has questions? So I'll thank the speaker. Well, thanks everyone for joining, and uh, it's my great honor to be sharing. Uh, this journey. Yeah, this is actually a very recent research, and uh, I, I I definitely accept understandable that there are a lot of questions on it. So I have published the paper, and we have been peer reviewed. Uh, yeah, so it's actually a way of getting new comments and ideas. <laughs> Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, everyone.